Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Oldish TV. As always, I am your host, Karen, and I'm so happy to see you here today. I am in such a positive mood and a positive frame of mind. You know, I'm a glass half full kind of girl, always. And this year has been very challenging for all of us. But today, in this moment, I have elected to focus on positive things. And I'm going to share seven positive things that this year has brought to all of us, really. I know that for every positive thing I share with you, there is an equal and opposite reaction that is negative. Don't at me. Don't comment on that. I know it's there. I am choosing to focus on the positive right now. And I hope that you will focus on this positive with me as well. It's better for our state of mind and our mental health and our emotional health to see the positives, to purposefully look for the positives. So I have seven things on my list. I'm going to share them with you. Number one, and perhaps the most important thing that has come about as a result of 2020, is the embrace of telehealth services. Now, they've been around for a while. Telehealth services have been around for a long time. We've all been sort of tinkering with them over the years. The doctors and the hospitals have been tinkering with them, some to greater effect than others. There are lots of reasons for us as patients to ask for, even demand, and then embrace telehealth services. Who wants to be in a room full of sick people? Not me. So that's a really good reason to use telehealth. Also, a lot of people in smaller rural communities, which as you know is where I live, are older adults. And for them going to a doctor in a faraway place, and a faraway place is the nearest city for some, it's challenging, it's draining. It takes a full day of preparation and oftentimes an adult child has to take time off work to take them there. So now you're impacting two lives. And so they go down and they sit in a waiting room at a doctor's office for long times. I mean, let's face it, the wait times aren't getting any shorter. They can sit there for a couple of hours for their 15 minute appointment, and then they have to drive home again. That's just so draining. And with telehealth services, it's not always necessary. I know that sometimes that face-to-face -face conversation is necessary, but it's not always. Now, here in Ontario, where I live, part of the problem was that until three or four years ago, our health funder, OHIP, did not pay doctors for telehealth visits. They do now. And doctors then started to embrace it. But, you know, yeah, we've always done it this way. So it was sort of slow to come about. But with the advent of the pandemic, it forced it. Now, you know that I'm on a hospital board. Up until this year, I would say that for probably five years before that, I was always advocating for a dedicated telehealth room at our hospital. We had one, but it shared the space with uh, the boardroom. So that meant if there was a meeting, and there are always meetings, the patients could use the telehealth equipment. So seemed crazy to me. And I started advocating five years ago for a dedicated telehealth room. Well, we now have one. And this year it started to be used better and better. And I'm sure that's the case with a lot of hospitals and doctor's offices around the world. You know, specialists are often at a distance. So telehealth lets us meet with specialists around the world, anywhere, at any time. So, you know, I think that embracing telehealth benefits all of us. That for me is a big positive. Number two, new ways of working. Every business, in my humble opinion, needs to examine how they do business on a regular basis. We get stuck in that, you know, we've always done it this way thing. And it's easier to think of reasons why we shouldn't embrace something new then it is to step outside of our comfort zone and actually embrace something new. But this 
pandemic year has forced us to find new partnerships and new collaborations. We have been working from home and we have figured out, not entirely and not for everyone, but a lot of companies have figured out how to do it well so that their employees stay safe and keep the business moving forward. They keep connecting with clients and making sure that things happen. That brings about the idea that when all of this has passed, companies are going to start looking at their bottom line. And I think a lot of companies are going to go, hmm, paying all that money for that big expensive place in the middle of the city. Do we really need to do that? Do we need five floors when we can just have one? Do we need that whole building when we can use something smaller and continue having our employees work from home? A lot of the employees like it too. They don't have to commute. They don't have to have the wardrobe. They don't have the expense of the car and the gas. You know, there are a lot of mutually beneficial reasons to find ways to keep on doing this on a more permanent basis. The infrastructure will need to look a little different to support um, residential areas that are now filled with people doing business from home. That can happen. There are also a lot of part-time jobs that are springing up that are needed to support people working from home. Jobs that weren't even invented a year ago. So that's a good thing. People looking for employment can find employment from the comfort of their own home and not have to go anywhere or do anything that is extraordinarily different. So, you know, new ways of working. That's my number two. Number three, and it still deals with technology, the embrace of technology. The older generations have been slower to embrace technologies. And when I say older generations, I'm talking about people who are maybe in their 70s, 80s, 90s, and hundreds. You know, we did our show last week about living well into your 90s and into your hundreds. So I'm going to include them. The oldest old is what they are technically called. But those who have retired recently, more recently in the last few years, we're used to using technology in their business and they've taken those skills into their retirement with them. So for them, it's not such a big deal, but there are still people who did not use so much technology in their business life when they were working and they've had to embrace it. Um, they have needed to stay in touch with family and friends. Again, that's social engagement ever so important. And they've been using things like FaceTime and zoom while they've been isolated. And people there, I know people who have still not left their houses since March. That is still an ongoing necessity for many older people with comorbidities. So anyway, remaining socially engaged is important for them and that they have been able to use, if not entirely master, but they're not, they're not really that difficult, use Zoom and FaceTime that gives them the confidence and the reassurance to go ahead and embrace other kinds of technologies. Now we're building houses these days that have lots of technology in them because we can, but where it benefits us is that so many more of us are rethinking how we can stay in our own homes for as long as possible. Using technology is one of the ways that we can do it safely. So there are lots of technologies that will monitor whether or not you fall, that will take your blood pressure, that will actually notice whether or not there is movement through your house. And if there's no movement, it will alert someone. Um, you know, all of these components to living independently, so many of them are just in something like a watch. I just got this um, upgrade to my Apple Watch. I had a generation two, and I think this is a generation six now, and it has an accelerometer in it, which means that if I take a hard fall, it asks me if I'm okay. And if I don't respond, it will call the people on my emergency ID list. It monitors my blood pressure. It monitors my heart rate. It can check for um, odd heart rates, arrhythmias, and such. All this stuff, and it's passive. It just it just happens. And I go to the app on my phone and I look at what it what it's gathered. And if there's anything concerning, 
I can call my doctor, and if there's not, I can just be glad that I'm being monitored. It's great. So all of these things are really important to remaining independent as we move forward in our lives. Number four, reconnecting with family and friends, long lost friends in some cases. You know, with so much time on our hands, we have started, many of us anyway, to search for old classmates, people that we used to work with and thought fondly of. Um, you know, are they on Facebook? What do they look like? Where do they live? Where are they? I was actually searched by a long lost friend just a couple of weeks ago. So this is a friend uh, from another place that I lived in. We were very close for a number of years, but, you know, children came into our lives and, uh, you know, dealing with them takes time away from doing much else. I moved away from the area, so we sort of lost touch, but we've reconnected and it's been really so nice to be able to catch up and find out what everybody's doing, um, what are her kids doing, what are my kids doing. It's been really nice. I've enjoyed that. So, you know, do a bit of that. Number five, home cooking and home baking. Now that might seem sort of an odd thing, but for those of us who lead busy lives, we can get a little bit caught up in foods that are prepared already the convenience of it all. But during that first lockdown, things started to happen. You know, people in the early days started to stock up on things and, and they stocked up on some sort of weird stuff and, you know, toilet paper, but prepared foods and what they should have been stocking up on and actually what they did start stocking up on were ingredients so that they could make multiple foods with items that were in their pantry dried beans and cans of tomatoes and, you know, the kinds of things that you can put together to make a meal instead of pulling a meal out of a freezer and thawing it. So that kind of a switch happened. Um, you know, my grandmother used to say, any fool who can read can read a recipe and cook. And she's actually right. Um, I've, I've always cooked, but, you know, when you get busy, you switch to the convenience foods. I find a lot of cooking now, um, wholesome ingredients. I know what I'm eating. Um, scratch baking. You know, I told you before, I started baking bread. My daughter gave me a recipe. And um, this friend I reconnected with on Facebook, I have very fond memories of her. One day a week, she would bake bread. And she'd bake it on her harvest table, and she'd be covered in flour, and there'd be enough bread at the end of it all to last her family, which was rather large, for a week. Now, I can't claim anything like that. I have a stand mixer that does most of the work for me, but I get a lot of joy out of baking a loaf of bread once a week for myself. And I haven't bought bread in months and months and months. Like a loaf of bread? Haven't done it. So, you know, that sort of rediscovery of home cooking and home baking has been very satisfying for a lot of us. Item number six is kind of related to cooking. It is gardening. You gardening? Are you? On your balcony or in your yard? Did you start a garden plot this year? I know that a lot of the seed companies were running out of seeds as people sought to grow their own food. Um, you know, it's not just about flowers anymore. I've watched websites and Facebook pages explode with how-to advice about growing your own garden uh, full of food that you like to eat. There are a lot of advantages to that. Not only is it cheaper, but you know what you're growing, you know what you're adding to the soil, you know what kind of products you're putting on it to control pests. And uh, you know, it's just a healthier way to eat. You can harvest your own stuff and have fun with your family that way. There's always the weeding. That's the part my kids never got onto was helping me weed. But I saw on the news yesterday that food prices in 2021 are expected to rise by 5%. So I really feel that next year, this trend toward growing your own uh, food in your backyard or in containers is going to continue. That's good. My number seven is all about wellness. We have embraced wellness. This year has been ever so challenging for everyone. Um, physically, emotionally, psychologically, and just in the last couple of months in particular, 
I have really noticed people embracing wellness. Now that just runs the gamut from exercise. People have been sharing exercise videos that they found on YouTube. They've dusted off that treadmill and they've jumped back on it. I use my treadmill in the winter, not so much in the summer. So it is winter now. I am back using it again, but that is more my habit. And I think a lot of people who have treadmills, you know, the old joke about hanging clothes on them, they're embracing them. And I did notice that early on in the pandemic months, things like weights and skipping ropes and exercise bands were very hard to find. They're starting to find their way back into the stores again. So people are buying them. Meditation has become ever so popular. Many have discovered online or telephone resources to deal with mental health, things like anxiety and stress, things that, you know, last year we may not have sought professional help for. We would have sucked it up or gone for a walk or exercised a bit more. But this year, without so many of those facilities available to us, we've had to figure out new ways of doing it. These online resources, a number of people who have caught onto ASMR video recordings on YouTube, crazy. If you haven't heard of ASMR, that's the one where people go to a microphone and they talk in whispers and they pop those airbags and they rattle things and make noises that's supposed to calm you down I a lot of them I just find kind of creepy but for those of you who find them calming that is great I will tell you that in Canada and the U.S. 211 has become ever so popular you can either dial 211 or you can go to your computer and put in 211 you can find all kinds of resources um, you can find mental health resources you can find out where to get food if you are hungry you can find out what's open and what's closed near you. It is just a fantastic resource. If you're in a crisis and you are in Canada or the U.S., you can text HOME to this number, 741-741. In the U.K., text 85258. And in Ireland, you text 50808 or you message crisis text line on Facebook and trained live counselors are at the other end just waiting for you. I've noticed a lot more people sharing music online too. It's kind of been neat you know they um, music you know is such a good thing as they say it soothes the savage beast. Some people say soothes the savage breast whatever the expression is that you prefer. Music is a go-to for many people. I've Notice too that a lot of artists have found ways to share their their music and their other talents online. The advantage for us is we get to sit in the comfort of our home and watch a Josh Groban concert for for cheap compared to what a live event ticket costs. Um, but he's not the only artist. There are a lot of them, so that is a very good thing. Um, skincare has seen an uptick in popularity. And producers who are manufacturing products for skincare that are made of natural ingredients have really enjoyed increasing popularity because again, it's just like growing vegetables in your yard. You wanna know what is going in your stomach. You also wanna know what is going on your skin. So, you know, those kinds of companies have enjoyed some popularity. Those are my seven things that have happened during 2020 that to me have been very positive. Again, I know that there's an equal and opposite reaction that is negative. A lot of people have lost jobs. A lot of people are more food insecure than they ever were. Totally understand that. And I'm not unsympathetic to it, but today we're talking about positives. And if you are one of the fortunate people who has enough food to eat and who has a job or at least an income of some kind, then I would urge you to focus on things that are positive. It is far better for your mental health. 
Now, as we go into the Christmas and Hanukkah season, whatever way you choose to celebrate holidays, we are going to celebrate as well. So this will be our last show of 2020, but we will be back in 2021 with new shows, new topics, and ready to greet you and greet 2021. And I would encourage you to join us then. Until then, be well, look after one another, look after yourselves, and do remember that it takes a village to age a senior. Bye, everybody. 